Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer tutorial. Today, I wanted to talk about this week's project. This is a Sheikah themed pendant using a NeoPixel jewel and a Gemma M0. So in today's tutorial, I want to take a look at how I use the spline tool to sketch out these details on the outer ring here. So if you get a good close, uh, close look at them, you can see they're kind of very, very curvy. And in some spots, they have curves. In other spots, they have kind of these sharp edges, like, for example, this here. So I learned quite a bit uh, while making this project. So I figured I'd let you guys know what my experiences were uh, with it. Now, I thought I knew the spline tool. The spline tool is under sketch. And you'll see here, it kind of looks like a little curvy line tool. So I'm used to things like uh, the Photoshop and Illustrator, maybe even Inkscape. They all kind of have the same general uh, way to create paths and curved paths. Uh, but there's a little bit of a different quirks here in Fusion 360. So let's take a look at kind of making it. So here in this document, um, I actually didn't freehand this at all. I actually traced this artwork. So this is actually concept artwork from Zelda Breath of the Wild. And this helped me out quite a bit because I really wasn't sure how to kind of draw these uh, from scratch. So it's nice that there's some concept art. Uh, and you can get a reference images into your document fairly easy. Uh, there, under the insert menu, there is something called insert or actually called attached canvas. So that's one way to add uh, reference art. And it's pretty straightforward to do that. So let's go ahead and start drawing something. Let's let's work on this little guy. It seems to be the easiest one. So what I'll do is I'll just create a sketch and we'll we'll draw right on this plane here. Let's zoom in into it. So let's talk about the uh, first of all. Let me talk a little bit about the line tool, right? So we all know the line tool. It's, it's very easy. We click and we can um, click things. So one thing though that I need to stop. Uh, it's a habit, it's kind of a bad habit, is when I want to stop sketching, I'll hit the escape key. And that's okay with the line tool, but it's actually not that good with the spline tool. So let me show you. I'm going to bring up the spline tool, and I wish the spline tool had a kind of a hotkey, kind of like T and O. Those have hotkeys, but there's no hotkey. So I think the easiest way to bring it up is to use the sketch Toolbox, you can bring it up by hitting the S key and then typing in spline and, uh, or at least a couple letters. You can do SP and, 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 and use your arrow keys uh, to get down to that. So I got my spline. Let me show you what I was talking about. So if you click, you get your first dot and you get this little preview of uh, the next curve. So I'll, let's make one over here. And you see as the third curve comes, you can see that you can start you can start seeing how the curve will behave. Now, when you're making a shape, it's probably good to just draw the paths first and then refine them later. So let's say we start sketching this thing. Now, I'm not purposely uh, tracing it, but let's say we have a bunch of things and we want to hit the escape key. Don't hit the escape key. Let me show you what happens when I do that. It's all gone. <laughs> all of my paths, all of the work that I spent on, time on, let's just imagine I spent time on it, it's all gone. So do not hit the escape key. It's, it's sort of this bad uh, habit that I've learned and I'm still fighting to break that habit. So just word of advice, don't use the escape key. You actually should use the checkbox. So when you make, uh, a, you have to make at least two points. Uh, and when you do, uh, you can hit this uh, check box and that will accept your line your, your your spline curve so right off when you create it it's just a two-point uh, spline it's very very straight and that's because our our our, um, our Bezier curves is what these things are called these little green handles they are what control the curvature so watch what happens when I click on one of these you can, you can click on either that one or that one it really doesn't matter so I click on that one you can, you can start seeing uh, what it's doing here. Now it's snapping to the grid. You could probably turn that off, but I've learned to deal with it. So I think the more you zoom in, the more uh, kind of details you get there. You're starting to feel a little bit more freehand that way. But of course it's harder to see your artwork. So you might want to turn off uh, the snapping and whatnot. But anyway, uh, you get this green outline here and that's kind of like a visual representation of what your curve is, is behaving like. 
Now, you could also bring them out to, uh, to really accentuate that curve, or you can bring them in to get a more tighter curve. You can see that it's starting to, that green thing starts turning into a circle, and the further out you go, it, it kind of breaks that circle. So uh, it's nice little visualization of how the curves are uh, kind of uh, performing. Uh, so they each each one of these points actually has their own uh, it has their own curvature. So you can really start playing with it and seeing how uh, they can interact with it. You kind of make this kind of weird swooshy S shape uh, with just two points. So it's probably important to note that the less uh, the less points you have, the the more kind of fluid they can be become. The more points you add. Uh, the more kind of difficult it is to manage your curve. So just keep that in mind. But let's say you want to insert a curve in between these two points. You can actually do that. You can right click on your curve and then there's this option here called insert spline fit point. So if you click on that, nothing happens. You have to actually click in your path. So you can see my cursor starts changing. It turns into this little uh, uh, crosshair. So I can click right there, for example, and then a new curve gets added. Now, Fusion doesn't, uh, it doesn't look like there's a curve there yet. You do get that visualization, but it isn't until you start manipulating it uh, and moving it around. Uh, so if you really want to get a fine-tuned kind of uh, thing here, uh, a fine-tuned, a little bit more complicated uh, shape, you can do that. But in this case, I don't think we need it. So if you want to get rid of one, you can just click on it and hit the Delete key. Okay, it's probably also worth noting uh, one thing here. If you make a closed spline, let's let's do that real quick. So let's make a closed spline. So we'll make kind of like a four point box here. Now watch what happens when I click on this. You get a full, fully closed spline curve. And the thing about this is when you manipulate one, everything gets manipulated. That's just the way this kind of behaves. So as I'm moving one, every little curve is changing. So just keep that in mind. If you do make a fully enclosed curve, it, manipulating one thing will move something else. So if you, if you have, so if like, for example, if all of these were precise and I didn't want to modify them, uh, you know, it's gonna be a little difficult because if you modify one, they all get modified. Now this is just the behavior of a fully closed spline curve, but you don't necessarily have to make a fully spline curved with one path, you can actually uh, make several of them to, to form uh, a, a different shape. Another thing to know is probably uh, some features stuff. So if we right click on it, you get all of these things here. So play around with these. Uh, so this right here will actually break our curve if we wanna add something to it. So let's try that out, we'll close that. And you can see that it no longer is closed. So now it's open. So if we wanted to add something here, we can add another spline in between these two ending points. So I'll, I'll open up my spline tool again, and I'll start off at this point here, and then I'll end it at that point, and then I'll hit OK. So it looks like a straight edge, but again, we get those, we get a second pair of um, Bezier curves. So now we can create this really interesting shape where it's got a lot of uh, curvature to it, but it's got very, very sharp edges. So you can see these edges. Uh, when you click on it, you can actually see how they interface with each other, or intersect rather with each other. So you have one Bezier curve going this way, and you have this one that's going all the way that way. So when you're cre when you're creating a shape that has multiple spline curves, be sure to click on that intersecting curve to get a, a real look at uh, all of uh, both of them and how they kind of they don't really influence each other. As you can see, I'm manipulating this and everything that's attached to that spline curve is moving except for this one because they're two separate spline curves. The thing that are joining them together is actually a sketch constraint. So you can see the constraint here. It is a coincidence, a coincident. Yeah, so that's, that's how you can create uh, a very, very sh uh, curvature shape uh, with very sharp edges, so. We can delete that and uh, play around with it again. Right click, open and close spline curve. Interesting. And again, if you want to add a, cur a, a spline in between two edges here, uh, right click, insert spline fit point, and then you have to click on somewhere to add your point, and then you can modify it that way. So 
hopefully that's enough to kind of start drawing this thing out now that we kind of understand the behavior. So just by looking at the shape, we can now determine how many spline curves we probably should have. We definitely don't want to do this with one spline curve. We want to use multiple spline curves. So I got my first one here. I think from here to here is okay. And then I'll probably make another one that will go from here and then follow and then end right there. Because it looks like there's a little bit of a sharp edge there. So let's go ahead and bring back our spline tool. And then we'll, and we'll start off at this point. So I click on that point and I'll click over here, over here, and then I'll probably end it right there. Now it looks nothing like the thing and that's because we will refine it later. So it's a good practice to just get your points figured out in the general direction. It's a really rough draft and then refine them later. Again, do not hit the escape key, hit the checkbox. All right, so now that we have that, accepted now we can refine our shape right so i'm going to move this over here and maybe this one goes over there and now if i want to make this curve over here instead of adding a, a thing here we could just manipulate this handle so you can see i got that curve right there because adding another point here is just going to complicate the geometry again it, it, less is more here right so I think that's looking okay. If you wanted to bring it tighter, just bring that in a little bit more. That's looking okay. So now I have this one and this one here. Let's continue. Let's make the bottom area here. Again, I'll bring back my spline tool. And I'll probably just have a two point, or actually three points. So we'll start from here, right there, and then we'll end it right there. I'll hit okay. Again, it looks nothing like the shape we have to we have to refine it. So I think just a little bit of a curve there. And I think we can bring out a little bit of the curve here. That's looking pretty good. And again, keeping in mind that as you manipulate one, the rest of the chain is being affected. So that looks pretty good. I'll click away just to kind of get a visual. Uh, that looks pretty good. All right, I think we need one more spline and we can close this shape off. So bring back the sketch model toolbox and get our spline tool. Let's start off over here. So I think we'll do one point there, obviously, one over here, one there, and then we'll have a fourth one here. All right, again, don't hit the escape key, hit the checkbox. Okay, now you can see we have a little problem here. There's a little bit of uh, intersecting points here. Easy to fix that. We just gotta manipulate the handle. Maybe something like that will work okay. And over here, we probably want the Bezier curve to kind of to kind of define this curve here. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'll manipulate just this one here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And I think that's kind of it. If we wanted to probably bring this in more, we could probably do that by affecting this one, and probably just a tiny bit more that way. Okay. So that's not look that's looking pretty good. I think it's okay. It's not exact, but it's pretty good. So at this point now we can uh, extrude this out. And when I extrude this out, I actually want to do a little demonstration of how uh, it's how 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 that performs a little bit. So let's go ahead and extrude this out by I don't know two millimeters or so. Uh, oh, my objects are hidden right now. So actually, let me. Let me bring up, I got a bunch of bodies here, so let me, each one is an individual body, so let me hide all that. Then select my profile, and then extrude it to, oh, let's say two millimeters, okay? So this is very, very curvy, but it's still got sharp edges, like this surface here to these uh, surfaces here are very, very sharp. So if we want to add a fillet, you kind of, well, you know, it's actually rather difficult to do a fillet on this. You kind of have to tweak your shape especially this one. So right off the bat, you'll know that um, f uh, the fillet doesn't see this as one full continuous path, so you just have to select uh, all the ones. Uh, because remember, we did make them into, we use multiple uh, splines to do this, uh, but we can just select them all. There's only four selected. So you can't do one millimeter, it's just too much. Uh, Fusion will actually throw an error, and it'll say that uh, you can't do that. Um, uh, try adjusting it. It's just the shape. And the reason is because it's really this shape right here. It's it's such a tight area that we can't, Fusion can't really define it and smooth it out. There's just too much going on there. 
So we can drop this down to like, I think 0.1 will work. That works okay, and you can see that looks okay. If we wanted to be a little bit more curvy though, let's say 0.2, that's not gonna happen, right? It won't do it. So what we need to do is actually kind of simplify this, this uh, cut here, this intersecting point. It's a little bit too tight, so we can't really get a fillet any bigger than 0.1 of a millimeter. So all we gotta do is kind of manipulate this. So really, we can just drag this out and kind of uh, make it a little bit less extreme. Uh, so we can refine the paths and the curves a little bit more. Sometimes it's just nice to click away so that all of the uh, extra visual aid stuff goes away. So you just click away if you want that. So maybe that will work a little bit better. Um, Let's give that a shot, hit stop. You can see it's not that extreme. It'll probably still be a little bit difficult. Let's do the fillet again. It's these four curves here, these four edges. Let's try point two. Yes, so there we go. We're able to do point uh, two just by uh, decreasing uh, that area there. And it's still a little bit funky there, so we can fine tune it if we wanted to, but that's just an example of manipulating uh, the the curves, the Bezian handles, uh, to get this a little bit bigger fillet. So hopefully that's enough uh, to get you guys started. And I learned quite a bit using the spline tool, uh, especially for this project. I really haven't used the spline tool that much. I have some notes here that I want to run through. Again, <laughs> let's run through them. Don't use the escape key. So that's just a habit, me personally, trying to get rid of uh, kind of what I know about the line tool. The next uh, point is using a rough draft first, accept it, and then refine it. So as you saw, I was only focusing on getting the points that I think were necessary, accept it, and then refine it. It's really important to do that, I think, because if you're trying to kind of get this perfect shape before you even manipulate it, it's just not going to happen. Another thing is to use multiple spline paths to get those sharp joints. So to get these really, really sharp joints, it would be very hard to do that with a fully closed uh, spline because as you've seen, the, when you modify one, uh, one Bezian curve, they all get modified. Everything influences each other, so it's nice to use multiple spline curves. All right, what else do we have? We have some features here. So the open and closed spline curve that is a feature I didn't know about until I started playing with it, and it can be very handy. Insert spline fit point. That's another handy feature. So if we want to uh, add an additional uh, point, you can do that. Right click, insert the point, and then you have to uh, apply the point. Okay. Reduced sharpness to add more fillets. So as you saw, uh, this was all the way over here, and that. Fusion didn't like that. It was very difficult for Fusion to figure out, uh, to kind of smooth that out. That geometry is really, really tight. So I think um, manipulating this uh, is probably the best way to go about adding more of a fillet. And the last thing is actually, I haven't used it. It's called toggle curvature display. So let's go back into our sketch and let's do that. So I'm going to right click on this guy and then select that option, Toggle Curvature Display. And this just gives us another visualization. I don't know why you would use this. I think the green lines are enough, but hey, it's there. It's kind of interesting. You can kind of manipulate it and whatnot. Um, I guess that's the kind of density of it. I don't know why you would need that for. Maybe if you're designing a car or some furniture or something, maybe this is helpful. But it is there, and I know about it now. Don't know what I would use it for, but it's nice that we have some additional options uh, to visualize our curvatures. So that's really it. Um, I used basically all of those techniques uh, to make uh, all of these little guys, and they don't look that great. <laughs> the more you look at them, they look kind of funky. But hey, that's kind of the the point of the. Uh, it's kind of the point of this, um, I guess, artwork. So. Let me know what you guys think. Have you used splines yet in your projects? Maybe this will help you out for those really bizarre designs. So that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know what you think of the spline tool and this tutorial. I'd love to hear from you guys. I always love reading your comments, and I will see you guys in the next one.